Let me introduce you to the new cabinet laser that has the concept of a CCD camera. So what is this all about? Basically, now with this sensor, you're able to print out cuts and then cut them on the contour all along this yellow line and all of this letters out on any material that you were able to cut with the laser. So first things first, when you look at it, you're going to see there's a ring light around it and underneath there is a camera, which I'm going to open now. It has a cover tip, once I open, then the light is here. On the motherboard, there will be a control for the light. When I switch the knob, the light increases, which I can switch to different colors depending on the material that I have. Now, how am I able to actually do a job, print it and be able to cut it on the laser? Let's get to the software. Let me show you about it. So the software, RD Mark Vision 8 from Roida, which you're going to use for this comes for free, of course, by the purchase of a new machine from AM. Now, here's how it works. As you open the software, you're going to see there's a camera that it shows here. And as you move the buttons, you're going to see that it's going to be showing me everything that is on the bed. I'm simply going to import a design which I've already imported here, which should be the exact same size as what I'm going to cut, which is now on the laser bed. Now, when you look at my design, this is what I'm going to cut out, including the words. But on every corner, you're going to notice that I have small dots. These are what we call registration marks. This can be any shape that you would like to have, whether it's a pentagon, a triangle, or a square. I prefer to have dots, and these are what the camera is going to pick up so that it can be able to know what it is going to cut. If you look at my design here, it is the same size as what is on the bed and the registration marks I was talking about are these dots that you see on every corner. Now, first thing I'm going to do is come to Model Set, which is the second option of those three. I get here and I come to Camera Parameters and Calibration. For every single time I change my registration mark or I change the focal distance, I'm going to have to calibrate the camera again. So I open it. In doing that, I'm going to move to the top right, which will be my first registration mark. Once having done that, I'm going to shrink this valid zone, the green one, to fit the size of my registration mark. But before we do that, we need to calibrate the camera first. Now I'm going to use that empty section on the bed, and I'm going to show you how. With my laser switch being on, I'm going to put the size of my registration mark here on cut circle. I have a 10 millimeter registration mark and I'm gonna say cut circle. Once you've cut the circle, you're gonna zoom it in because the camera is gonna go right where the circle is. And I'm gonna make this green valid zone to match the size of the circle. You can zoom in on the camera by simply scrolling with the middle knob on your mouse or simply opening the pad. Once you have the green valid zone matching the size of the circle, the value that it shows you on the axis here is what you're going to write where it says graph length. Having written that, you come to calculate. This is for it to understand the offset between what the camera sees and what the actual size is. Once you calculate it, it's gonna give you a new ratio here. And now we've calibrated the sizes. Next thing we're going to calibrate is the offset of the camera, which is now on two. I'm gonna move my nozzle to an empty space on the bed, preferably not where I'm actually going to be cutting. After that, I'm going to put the size of a cross I want to cut. It can be any size. I just want it to almost match the size of the drawing that I have. So I'm going to click on cut cross. Having cut the cross, 
Being that it also has a bigger size, I'm going to zoom my camera out first. All right. And then I'm going to increase this craft lens to almost match the size of my cross. Right. Once I do that, I'm going to zoom back in just to see that the red line here is in line with the cross that I have cut. For you to have small increments, you can also use this pad. Simply firstly reduce the speed from whatever it was to something very meager. And then after that, you can then move it sideways. Every time you move on the bed, you see that it also changes the values on the screen. So which means it is registering in the software that you are moving. As long as you do not move the piece itself on the bed. All right. Now, having aligned this cross that you cut and the cross that the camera has, you come here to calibration on second size and then click on calibration. Correction of success and then it writes the offset corrected. After that, just say okay and we're done with the camera calibration. Next thing we're doing now is simply starting the job. I'm now going to move my camera to my first registration mark on the top right. Once I find it, I actually want my valid zone to be somewhat almost the size of my registration mark so that it doesn't pick anything else except the registration mark. All right, something like this should suffice. Oh, and by the way, while I'm in the parameter camera calibrations, I can also adjust the contrast, gain, and exposure of the camera. As you can see right now, if I increase the gain, everything on the camera will also change. Right, so all that's left to do now is for my camera to pick up every registration mark, and then it can start cutting. On my top right registration mark, where my camera is now, I try to align it. Right. Having done that, I'm going to pick the same registration mark on my drawing here, which I'm going to highlight first. Once I highlight it and I clearly see that it is highlighted, I'm going to come to this point here written set first mark point. Once I click it, it is set the first mark point and I'm going to click on auto search mark point. I want you to notice what happens the moment I click it. If you see all of these registration marks, as of the moment, they're not selected. But once I click it, all of them are gonna come in registration. Next thing I'm gonna do after having picked the four registration marks is come to mode of set and move now to manual. On manual, I'm gonna tell it to mark first. Once I click this, I'm going to come back to mode of set and click on match test. This is gonna allow me to see if the camera is really picking my registration mark. Having done this, the next thing I do is start. And there we go. So basically, I've done a cutout now. I didn't just engrave, but I actually cut through this material. And as you can see, this is how accurate it actually cuts. 
right. Fascinating, isn't it? Now, a couple of pointers on this in case you're going to experience a bit of a problem when you're trying to align your camera and with the registration marks. We're going to start with the registration marks. In the model set, it is important that I almost have the size of my registration mark. It doesn't have to be precise, but somewhere in the range of the circle that I'm going to cut to calibrate the camera. One. Secondly, the type of registration mark I'm going to put is here. I can have a cross, a diamond, ellipse, rectangle, ring, square or triangle. And the size of the registration mark, plus or minus, I should also put it here. So right now I have a similarly almost 10 millimeter registration mark, and but it's about nine point something. So I'm just gonna put nine here. And even if I had put 10, it would still pick up properly. The next thing is, Black and white should normally be selected when I am picking up my registration marks. Sometimes with one not ticked, I'm not going to be able to see the registration mark or at least the camera is not going to be able to see the registration marks. Thirdly, you see similarity here. When I'm doing my match test, sometimes it's going to pick up more than the registration mark inside the bed. So it is important that I play around with the similarity of my registration mark to what is on the design here. So normally, the higher the similarity, the better it can actually see what it is picking. Unless, of course, my registration marks are slightly different from what I have in the software and I don't want to recalibrate it. You normally don't need an angle error because your camera is normally straight down. Because you see this graph lens that we have here is matching the area of my registration mark. It is important to have your registration mark a bit away from the actual design that you're going to cut so that when you do a match test, the camera is not going to be able to pick up the drawing and the registration mark, as you can see on the drawing there. What I mean is this is not here, because if it was here, the camera would have picked out with the drawing, but it's a bit further so that the camera can just pick out circle. Now let me emphasize this. I can make the design on any software that I would like to use, CorelDRAW, or Vinok, or any. But the important thing is when I export the file, it has to be a vector file. You have your DXF and uh, PLT, SVG, all those formats as long as the software can pick it up. And remember, I'm bringing out two files. One is the file that I'm going to print and stick on my material, which can be a TIFF, PNG, whatever. Just make sure that that file is the same size as the file that I'm actually going to send as a contour or a vector file to the software. With that being done, you should be able to cut properly. You'll also be happy to know that the moment I select all the registration marks here and just before I start cutting, if I come to the option written export here, I will be able to set the parameters I need. In the case that I want to cut, of course, I'm going to lower my speed and increase my power. This is the normal RDUX window where you have a layer of the color that you have as your design. Setting your speed, of course, is telling it that the lower the speed and the, lower the, and the higher the power, you can be able to cut. The higher the speed, the less of the power, of course, you would now be engraving. Always match your power here. And finally, of course, you need the output to be yes. Once this is no, that means it's not going to be able to cut that layer. And the last tip is, if you right click on the bed here, on the camera, you can actually also be able to move the camera towards the direction where the mouse is. And that's it. So now you know how the TrueCut cabinet laser with the CCD camera, which is now available at AM, works. I'll have you know that for purchase, you can contact our sales and our tech support team is always here to support you. We have more videos on all our machines at our website, am.co.za and also our YouTube channel, Achievement Matters. Thank you, till next time.